Yusuke Urameshi is my favorite anime character of all time. In fact, so much so, you guys probably never noticed this, but um, the little anime character that I use for screencast videos sometimes, his outfit is actually inspired by Yusuke Urameshi. So, Yu Yu Hakusho is a show best described as an anime that tries to ask and answer a very important question. And that question is, what does it mean to be a man? Now, the entire show wrestles with this theme, asking multiple different questions through the multiple different story arcs and fights that occur. We're not going to be talking about all of it today. We're mostly going to be focusing on two elements found in Yusuke's character and one of the most important fights in the entire series. So let's first start off and talk about Yusuke Urameshi as a character and why I relate to him so much even though in all actuality we're kind of opposites. Because Yusuke is a delinquent who grew up without any father figure at all and me, I was mostly straight edge and I did have my father until my mom and dad got a divorce. Now I still am in contact with him, he was never estranged or anything like that, but there is still a strong juxtaposition between the two of us. So why would I relate to him so much? In fact, Yusuke kind of, even when I was a kid, to how I am now kind of, still works as a little bit of an opposition to me. And that is, Yusuke is a character that has a really gruff, really rough exterior of always trying to appear really cool or like a badass. Me, on the other hand, is I'm pretty soft and open and emotionally vulnerable a lot of the time. Now the difference is for Yusuke, this is a giant shell to protect the ooey gooey small softness that is actually inside of him. For me, I oftentimes, especially as a kid, was filled with a lot of rage, anger, and frustration, and sometimes I kind of just wanted a fight. So again, if me and Yusuke are such opposites, how can I relate to him in such a manner? Well, that is what this video exists to explain. Growing up without a father actually did not leave Yusuke's moral compass in jeopardy. In fact, one of the core elements of Yusuke's personality is actually found in his total disregard for himself sometimes in the pursuit of trying to protect other people. This is actually found literally at the beginning of the show when he sacrificed himself to rescue a kid that he didn't even know. One of the best character moments in the entire show is actually seen when Yusuke is absorbing the spirit away of Ginkai gave to him. Throughout the course of three or four episodes, we see Yusuke struggling to adapt to the power that Ginkai spirit orb is trying to graft into his body. In fact, he's in so much pain and agony, he's screaming, he's yelling, he's punching the walls. It honestly looks like he really can't handle it. It gets to a point where the pain becomes so unbearable that Yusuke has no choice but to lay on the ground and not even move because if he flinches just a little bit, the pain courses throughout his entire body. Now, this is where things get really, really interesting. And this is actually why this is one of my favorite scenes throughout all of anime. At one point, Yusuke gets a drop of water. And when he looks up, he notices that there's someone there helping him out. See, now that's what I'm talking about. I'm burning up so bad one little drop of water and I feel like I'm swimming in it. Yeah. Wait a second, water? Hey. What's that little guy doing? Ah uh, yes, that's Yusuke's spirit beast. Essentially, it is a reflection of the person's true spirit or character within. So you're probably wondering, why is Yusuke's spirit beast this small, little cute animal, despite the fact that Yusuke tries to be so hard and tough all the time? Well, that, my friends, is called dramatic irony. 
Essentially, it's a commentary on how despite the outward appearance Yusuke tries to project, in reality, Yusuke is actually a small, cute, and not just cute, but caring individual. Again, in the scene, you're seeing Pooh trying to take care of Yusuke. But what else makes this scene so fantastic? Well, notice something right here. What a stupid little bastard. Notice that despite all of the pain that Yusuke was going through, despite all of the yelling and screaming, Yusuke didn't cry. He didn't start crying until he saw that someone else was in pain. Yusuke didn't start shedding a tear until he saw that someone that he cared about was in pain because he couldn't handle what he was going through. Which is reflecting the character that Yusuke really is. He's a person that cares more about other people than he really cares about himself sometimes. <laughs> The connection with your spirit beast is a full package deal, Yusuke. It is like your reflection. When you're happy, it will be happy. When you're in pain, it will suffer. And if you die, so will it. It is you. Oh, that's just perfect. <laughs> I even get to let down my own inner self, too. He's in pain because I am. Because I couldn't hold my weight. Protecting other people, sometimes to his own detriment, is one of Yusuke's most defining character traits. Which you might think would be its own problem in some different ways. And to be fair, there is a character in particular that does address that thematic theme. But we're not here to talk about him today, so let's just focus on Yusuke. Essentially, what this is showing is that despite not having a father, Yusuke's moral code is still integral to his character. He didn't need to have a dad to get to that point. But we're still trying to answer a really important question now, aren't we? And that is, what does it mean to be a man? Well, one element, one aspect of that whole criteria of what it means to be a man can no better be shown in the final confrontation with Tagoro. Yusuke versus Tagoro, surprise, surprise, is actually one of my favorite final battles in an anime. I, I know, shocker, Yusuke is my favorite character, Yu Hakusho is my favorite anime. Tagoro versus Yusuke is one of my favorite fights, I mean, but here's the thing. What makes this fight so amazing is actually not what appears before the naked eye, at least not immediately. At first, it, what appears on the surface is a fight between two strong guys fighting each other to prove who the strongest guy is. But that's not accurate. That's not actually what's going on here. Yusuke versus Tagoro is actually a fight that's asking a very important question about the aspect of being a man. And that is, what does a man do when he's given power? Does he use it for his own gains to get what he wants? Or does he use it to protect the people that he cares about? That's the question. The very beginning of the fight opens up with Yusuke dodging several strikes from Tagoro. Except, something interesting happens during the exchange. And that is for a moment, Yusuke stops dodging and blocks one of the strikes that was clearly shown to be rather devastating. I can't believe the extent to which Yusuke's technique has improved. So why did Yusuke stop? Why did Yusuke prepare to block the strike? Well, if you keep watching the scene, you'll find that the entire group of the girls that Yusuke loves and wants to protect 
is in the stands behind him. Another important aspect about this final confrontation is that Yusuke's full potential isn't realized until he breaks through the walls between his emotions and his powers. And this doesn't occur until Yusuke, interestingly enough, fails to protect Kuwabara from being, well, killed by Tagoro. Stop it, Tagoro! A mulberry is a tree, Kuwabara is a man, and I'll prove it. We all have to die when our time comes, but if we do our duty, we don't got regrets. So taste a little piece of my sword, Tagoro. Uh, Kuwabara, no! no! It's all you. I did what I could. Now beat him for all of us. Make my death count, okay? Hold on now, Kobara. Just stay with us. Kobara, just stay with us. <laughs> That's anticlimactic. You knew him for so long and now he's dead. Do you think that was sufficient for you? Or do I need to take another of your friends for you to get the point? What? Huh? So I guess that was enough. You took my teacher. And now I let you take my friend. What the hell do you want from me? Don't you think I wanted to use my power and win this thing and go home? Of course. I just didn't know how to reach it. And I have to live with that. Another interesting aspect of this confrontation goes when Yusuke's powers are finally unleashed. How some of the people in the stand start speaking about how his powers are interacting in the atmosphere around them. I'd say the wind is somewhat the same. For all those still listening to this broadcast, Yusuke is emitting a strange energy unlike anything we've seen from him before. His feelings. I can practically taste them all in the air. Both their powers are mixing together. It's the real dinky die, mate. It's got the strength of a U, but for some reason it doesn't feel harmful. Yeah, it's weird. All of a sudden I feel a whole lot better. Kind of like I'm being protected or something. It's such of a melancholy windy be firing. Like I can feel the sad on his inner sides pouring out into a big black empty. Yusuke is locked in a struggle with his own emotions. A sense of guilt is reversing his power. His defense goes outward, guarding all of us in the stadium, while his attack is aimed solely on himself. Now, Yu Yu Hakusho is not an overly complex anime. In fact, the theme of this fight is actually spoken about by the two participants in it. Yusuke and Tagoro do have an interaction that is reflecting essentially what this fight is about. Thank you, Yusuke. What do you owe these people? Why do you let their weakness drag you down? Throw off the bags of guilt and you can become as powerful as me! Give yourself control! Believe in nothing but your own strength and it can never let you down! <laughs> I 
<laughs> Shut up, Tagoro. I'm not like you. I won't just throw people away. Can't let go. I never would have gotten this far without those guys' help. And whenever I was getting my head rearranged, it was always because I cared about them that I could win. And that's precisely the reason you've been limited up till now. You're too soft. You don't need anyone but yourself. Don't you understand that? <laughs> Guess I need to kill another one of your friends. So, let's explain. Each participant in the fight is answering the question, what does a man do with power? Tagoro's answer to that question is that he uses his power to subjugate people. What's interesting is that you can even see this in the team that he's using in the Dark Tournament. The two fighters, Karasu and Bui, are actually two demons that Tagoro beat up and forced to fight for him. You defeat me now, or become my slave! This is in stark contrast to Yusuke's team. Kuwabara, Kurama, and Hiei at numerous times in the tournament has shown that they are not people here who are just fighting to oppose other people or to oppress them. They're fighting not only to live, because Tagoro threatened to kill them if they didn't, but they're also fighting to protect their friends and each other. Each one of them almost in every fight, well not every fight, not Hiei always at least, has a moment where they're willing to either sacrifice themselves or willing to do something that is illegal or get them in trouble to protect their comrade. I'll just break your face! That is stuck. But why, Risho? Lay him outside of the ring. But he's killed our sect members! Yes. And if you had landed that punch, you would have died as well. What? Or do you think you would have survived a bullet in the back? It's clear Yusuke cares more about that demon's life than this tournament. He's ready to fight every apparition in the stadium if he must. We need to win, not be involved in a revolt. Can you reprieve? So did you, witch. Huh? Or should I say, so did everyone else in this stadium. Yusuke wasn't the only one about to fire. So was he, and their combined power would not have been contained in the ring. Risho felt it, didn't you? That meteor attack was even stronger than the first! Kuwabara's whole body is doing the wiggle dance, and yet he still tries to get up! Why? Why don't you quit? <laughs> you dummy! Guess you haven't checked the score for this round lately. Ah, we've got four wins and you've got two, and the first team to five advances. Your machine Kurama gave it all for us, and now I still have a way to bring it home for him. He's going to kill himself. Only delay this, you're still going to die. No joke, moron. That's the whole point of this fight. As long as I take you with me. What? If this fight ends in a draw, my team wins, and the rest of my guys get to live. I couldn't have been more wrong about my so-called lack of tact, Karasu. Just as wrong as believing that mark on your chest is only a harmless scratch. The smell of the wound so close to your heart would be more than enough for a bloodthirsty plant. You may not think I possess the ability to summon a plant, but you will soon find out that you were wrong there as well. I can summon once more in exchange for my life. Yusuke and Tagoro as foils actually goes one step deeper. Actually, maybe it's not that it goes one step deeper, but it's actually really, really, really surface level. In fact, it's so surface level, you probably wouldn't even think too hard about it unless someone commentated on it. Interestingly enough, think about Tagoro's presentation, his design unto itself. Tagoro is a ridiculously huge hulk of muscle. He fights with his physical strength above anything else. In contrast, Yusuke fights with his spirit energy, and his spirit energy is connected to his emotions. In other words, Yusuke fights literally with how he feels. And as such, this fight is actually asking us another question. 
and that is, what is the measure of power from a man in the first place? Is it simply his physical brute strength, or is it his spirit, his character, his emotions as well? So in the end, we are given an answer to two of our questions with the defeat of Tagoro. Those two questions and the answers being, what does a man do with power? He protects the people that he cares about. And the second question, what is the measure of a man's power? Is not simply just found in his brute physical strength, but it's also found in his emotions and his willingness to do what's right with the power that he's been granted with him. It's not enough to just have power. It's not enough to just be able to enforce your will. But the motivation behind it is equally as important. Again, this is Yuse K's response to what Tagoro is saying when he's telling him he can use his power to do whatever he wants. Let go. I, somewhere inside, I, I respected you, you know that? Let's just say I haven't had many older guys to look up to. And what you seem to have going, it didn't look so bad. Genkai told me over and over again how stupid I was. But I saw your strength, and how no one could boss you around no matter what. And I wanted that. Hm. Then you should take my advice. Idiot! I'm not done. That's what I did want. Until Genkai told me the rest. He asked the committee to turn him from a human into a demon of the highest class. He left us so he could keep his youth and his precious strength. Everyone has to fight with time, to find their place before their inevitable death. Tagoro, he ran away from that fight. Don't you ever do the same. No human is ever a one-man show. Every decision that you make will affect the countless people who care about you. Do you understand? You can't just be a cocky kid anymore. You have to... Since I started this whole tournament, I've learned the value of what you gave away. And I won't let it go, even if I have to give up my life! If doing whatever he wants means that he casts away his friends and rises to the top by himself, then it's not worth it. In conclusion, Yusuke is one of my favorite anime characters because he taught me something very, very important. And what he taught me is that being an emotional person is not the same as being a weak person. Being emotional doesn't mean that you're strong. Having emotions is what makes you strong. You're not just a physically powerful person. You're not just your muscles. You're not just your ability to actualize yourself on the world. But you're also a person that has spirit. You're also a person who's deeply connected to your emotions. You need both aspects of this to be a man. You can't just have one without the other. You need to know what's important about fighting as much as being able to have the ability and capacity to fight in the first place. Again, you have to remember, when Genkai told Tagoro to kill one of Yusuke's teammates, this is what she said. Sorry, Yusuke, but this is the world you stuck yourself into and it's not pretty. When you're not strong enough to lead, you lose the privilege of getting what you want. Kai is 100% correct. Without power, you don't have the ability to actualize yourself in the world. But Tagoro is wrong, because having power isn't licensed to do whatever you want in the world in the first place. You have to be like Yusuke, someone who uses his emotions as his strength. He's not one or the other, he's both. Yusuke has a willingness to fight and protect the people he cares about, but it's because he cares about them He's willing to use his strength to do what's right to keep them safe. And that is why Yusuke is one of my favorite characters of all time. So hopefully, you guys also got something really good out of this video. So that being said, I just hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, then go ahead and click the like button. Ah, shoot. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.